Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here with Derek for our second episode of our show, Spoken Wheel Show. In this episode, we'll be covering luxury cars, cars that have just been released, an exclusive version of the bidding paddle, some upcoming cars, and of course, how could this be the Spoken Wheel Show without... Hello. Roast My Ride. There's a new Bugatti out, and it's called the Bugatti Baby 2. It just came out. It's actually a scaled-down version of the Type 35 um, built from 1926. So it's, it's pretty interesting. It's, it's, it's a very, very small car. Very small car compared um, to the actual Bugattis that were produced. And it's built by a British company called Little Car Company. Hence, they're very small cars. And I'm pretty sure you can see in your picture, there's a very big man driving a size of a coffin car. Uh, yes, it's the size of a coffin car. Now, you might say, Bugatti making a miniature car, this is a bit stupid. Well, it's not like some Volkswagen weird project they're forcing Bugatti to do. Turns out, Bugatti's actually done this in the past. As a matter of fact, in 1926, Ettore, 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 Bugatti built a mini car for his son's fourth birthday. And as a matter of fact, Bugatti customers thought that car was so cool, they actually put it into production and built 500 of them. No one's ever seen the car, though, but they did build 500. That's a cool birthday present. Yes, very cool. Especially when your dad is the head of Bugatti. Now, there are three versions of this car, and the top of the line one is called the Pure Song. Pure Sang. Pure Song. Pure Sang. We're not sure if it's French or not, um, but it's called that. And it has a top speed of a whopping... 42 miles an hour. But we've got one problem. The issue is, I'm now paying, as it says here, $75,000. $75,000 for a car that can only go 42 miles an hour and the size of my grandfather's coffin. And it's not street legal. And on top of that, these two cars behind us, combined, is not 75000 So would you rather have two or three classic cars or this mini Bugatti, which that you, you can't can only drive, drive around in your circular driveway. Yeah. Now, BMW has a new car. It's more of a special edition car, but it's quite an interesting one, though. Allow me to explain. So it's called the BMW X7 M50i Dark Shadow Edition. Very long name for a very complex yet not so complex car. So, could BM you tell us how much this complex car costs? It starts at $120,000, and you might say that's expensive. <laughs> Keep in mind, big luxury car, it'll be worth $40,000 in probably two years. So, let me tell you some of the things you're getting for this $120,000 car. You've got black chrome, which at this point I don't understand, which, who has black chrome? I guess it's shiny black plastic, I guess. You've got black trim, you've got the black wheels, which actually do look really nice, and a, a new gray paint with a new interior. And um, if you see the front grill, it actually kind of blends it in and hides that really monstrous front grill. And uh, if you look at the front end, it has those really, really tiny headlights, which, which actually, you know, for BMWs, it's, it's a really nice juxtaposition between these huge, huge front grills and the tiny headlights. Moving on into the interior, it has really nice diamond stitching. It has a contrast, if you notice, a blue and black, which I, it took me a long time to see that. So it's a, <laughs> it did take me a long time to see that, Joey. So yes, it's a beautiful interior. Now, the one thing about this car is, even though it is a rare version, if you think about BMW drivers, specifically in Los Angeles, they all tint their windows black, black out all the chrome, do the black wheels. So essentially every BMW owner already owns this car. So it's BMW's people's car. The people's car. <laughs> Not that it's a Volkswagen. Now, some interesting news. Toyota has recalled more than 180,000 Tundra pickup trucks. Are you ready for the reason, Derek? Oh dear. For faulty turn signals. Now, many people don't use turn signals, and let me explain why this is a bit of an interesting situation. Wait till you hear my theory. So you might remember that BMW and Toyota built the new Supra together, and people called it the BMW Supra, even though it was a Toyota BMW. Point was, it was a collaboration between the two companies. And may I add, it's a really nice car. It's a great car for anyone who wants a nice BMW, BMW Toyota. BMW, Toyota. Now, the thing is, it is more of a BMW than a Toyota. BMW drivers 
never, ever, ever use their turn signals. They're medically incapacitated to do so. And now we've deduced from our further reasoning and our collaborative brains and thought processes that now this disease that BMW drivers have have now spread to Toyota drivers. And all evidence points towards this. Oh, dear. Unfortunate. Who's next? Good news! What? There's a new Mitsubishi Mirage! Yes! So, the car hasn't actually changed much, like, in seven years. As a person who's seen the car market change for a long time, seven years is a very long time. Well, one surprising thing, it actually now looks good. Now, hear me out. So, it starts at less than $15,000. So, which is not, it's a pretty good bargain for a nice looking car. But here's why we chose this car. Because we don't usually choose economy boxes. Mitsubishi used to have a car called the Evo, and it was like this rally-inspired car, very sporty, and it was a cool car. And Mitsubishi used to build sports cars like the FTO and the GTO, and they had all these cool cars, and Mitsubishi was a cool company. Until they killed off all those cars and started building cars like this. However, I think this new Mitsubishi Mirage... Mirage. The Mirage. ...is a sports car. Here's why. First off, if you look at the door handle and the inner trim, it is made of carbon plastic fiber. Uh, does it save weight? Yes, it does. Why would it not? Another thing to mention, if you look closely at the rev counter, it's very, very strange details they've added into this particular picture of the rev counter. It actually does not know what revs it's counting. So this might be helpful if you're racing and you don't know when to change. You just change when you feel that the engine should change. Which means it's an intelligent driver for an intelligent car. Based on this photo, this very photo we have, we can now deduce that this car has two of the most quintessential parts of an automobile. Speed and power. Now you might say, you're being a little ridiculous. This car is that interesting. Well, if you don't think it is, let's compare it to at least not this car. <coughs> oh dear. Oh God. Now moving on to the bidding panel. Right now, there's a 1966 Aston Martin DB6 and a 2019 Aston Martin Vanquish Zagato for sale. And both of them are selling at a Bonhams and Quail auction. So the Vanquish is actually built by an Italian coach builder named Zagato. Now, Zagato, you've probably heard of. They're a very well-known Italian coach builder. Starting off with the Vanquish, there is only one of 99 built. Uh, why not 100? We're not exactly sure. Now, it is a shooting brake, and if you've never heard of a shooting brake, a shooting brake is a two-door station wagon. Now, to be honest, despite being this two-door station wagon, it's not really that practical. I mean, if you look at the trunk here, it can't really fit much at all. I have to agree. Now. One thing about the Vanquish Zagato is you'll notice these taillights. Really, really interesting to look at. Just the small details and this kind of gold trim. And then hidden in the design and the stitching in the interior, there's all these Zs for Zagato. Oh. Now, the DB6 was modified by its original owner. Yes, that's quite bold. Modified for an optimal experience while playing golf. Now, may I remind you that... Actually, shooting brakes were designed for game hunting at old English manor houses in the middle of England to go shoot some pheasants on the late afternoons. Now, what are these modifications? Well, it has a roof rack, a sunroof, and air conditioning. Yes, three huge modifications that would completely ruin a car and make it worth no money at all. Now, the DB6 has a little less than 50,000 miles, which means it's actually been driven. That's very nice. While the Vanquish Zagato has five miles. Yes, five. From the dealership, to the trailer, to the house. To the driveway. To the driveway. To the garage vault. Both of these cars, like I just mentioned, will probably be stored away in some vault in underground somewhere that will never be seen in the light of day ever again. So that's the sad part. But they're still great cars. So next up on the bidding paddle, we have a 2005 Ferrari 575 GTZ Zagato. Not many coach-built Ferraris exist, and if there are coach-built Ferraris, they're usually built by Pininfarina, who designs pretty much all almost Ferraris. all Ferraris. I think almost every Ferrari. So, you look at the paint job, it's pretty cool paint job, because you don't really see Ferraris in blue, do you? No. So, it, it's got a, a two-tone paint job, blue with the white top, and 
the front grill, like if you look at the stance on the side of the car with that front grill is just amazing. Yeah, and it looks like the classic 50s retro Ferraris, you know, the 250 SWBs and all those. And I gotta say, it, it is a stunning spec for sure. I have one issue with this car though. Uh, Zagato wasn't really clever with the design. They kind of copied another Ferrari, the 612 Scaglietti, 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 Scaglietti. The wheels look the same. The wheels are the same. The headlights are the exact same. The body shape is the same. But the grill looks better. Next up on the bidding paddle, we've got a 2000 Mercedes-Benz E320 pickup. Yes, you heard him right, a pickup. Now, why this car was built? We're not sure. Now, it's built by this company called Bins, and their saying is, Benz by Bins. If you were to say that 10 times fast, you'd end up with Benz by Bins, 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 Benz by Bins. If I speed that up in editing, it'll sound really weird. Benz by Bins, 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 Benz by Bins. Not a good nursery rhyme, but surprisingly, the car actually is a very high quality car. Now, one of the things is, it, it, you look at the car, it, it, it's actually more of a ute, which if you know from England or Australia, I mean, actually, primarily Australia, a ute is more or less like a, a low, it's like an El Camino for Americans or a, or a ranchero. This is more or less that than a pickup. And um, I have brought up a picture for you to see. It looks actually just like a 1960 Cadillac flower car. If you look at the rail in the back, you, you see the design lurking from the sides of the car, the, the rail going around the back. So you could say it's a very dismal car. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, whether that's a compliment or not, we're not exactly sure. But, it's one of the but uh, it's, it, it's, it's unique and it's one of a kind. And I actually think that's kind of cool because Mercedes-Benz has never built a ute. And most people, when they show up in a ute, it's either a Holden or a Ford. So you show up in a Mercedes-Benz, you're Mr. Luxury. Or the German dictator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> now, you've probably seen the video on the internet that, I wouldn't say went viral. <laughs> but it was Vaughn Gittin Jr driving a Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400. Now the reason it's called the 1400 is because it makes 1400 horsepower. Yes, that's quite a bit. Which that also means being into electric with all the instant torque, it shreds tires. As someone who understands how a car works and how to change a tire and how to take an oil change. Not that I wouldn't. I do. It has seven combined electric motors. Four in the rear and three in the front, so you can say it's predominantly rear-wheel drive, but yet you've still got front-wheel drive. So, um, a quote from the Ford performance chief, Mark Rushbrook, said in an interview, which I think this is the most terribly funny quote, the Mach-E 1400 expands the envelope of all aspects of the production car. Now, strangely enough, I don't know what an envelope is for a production car. But it's a very interesting, interesting description. But yes. Now, is he opening the envelope or sealing it? Either way. Self-interpreted. Now, just to be clear, this car is a one-off. No, you cannot buy one. The actual Mach-E only has 260 to 460 horsepower, depending on which trim you choose. So therefore, one, it's not insanely quick like this car. And two, it's not going to shred tires like this car. And this is a very misleading video because... You can't get anything close to this car, and no one knows why Ford actually built this car or filmed this video. It's like those stupid concept cars they keep building. Yeah. Like, they, they, why do they do that? that, yeah, that. Why would they? Why would they? Right now, we're basting the chicken on Roast My Ride. And right now, we also got a, oh god, I can't say that. You've got to say that. Ha <laughs> ha! Funny oh. you did that, Derek. Uh, we have a, uh, Sigala, right. Sigala, Sigala, Sigalert, no, that's the traffic no, that's, jam. That's the traffic one for LA. Um. Sigala, 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 move on, move on, move on, move on. Sigala Designs, Corvette C8 RR Widebody. Yes, what a name. Now, just to be clear, 
We don't hate all modified cars. No, we don't. We actually quite enjoyed them. Only certain ones we only certain hate. Ones. Only certain majority. Certain ones. Certain ones, yes. Now, just to be clear, these are digital renderings of a car that will be built. They haven't built any of these yet since no one's really gotten their hands on the new Corvette yet. But once the new Corvettes come in, you will unfortunately see these on the road and people might need to get some cataract surgery soon. So, the problem is is it's way too complicated design-wise. You look at the side, you look at the front end and the side, it looks like they've thrown knives at it. I mean, I, I don't know. And then there's this weird body line that goes down the front fender. I don't know if that's that might be cooling the brakes or the air pressure when you're driving fast. Something along those lines, I don't know, because they're digital renderings. That's the problem when you don't have a clay model car. Anyways, if you look at the front, it has these funny, strange fog lights. Um, they look like really tiny Elvis sideburns. Um, <laughs> and uh, not to mention the wheels, which are massive for a car so short. And it's lowered suspension, so they're really massive. They're really big. But I will have to admit, the louvers on the side of the car are really nice. Well, decent. They're, they're nice, decent. Louvers are never really pretty. They're functional. And is this car functional? We don't know. We don't know. Because right now, we're going to look at the back of the car. And it's got this massive, huge wing. Like I said, it's got this huge wing on the back. And if you've ever been to a marina in the past 80 years, you've noticed how yachts have now taken up this sort of thing called a yacht spoiler. What is it called? It's called, yes, a yacht spoiler. And the back of this car... May I mention, looks like the rear of the yacht spoiler. And I have now drawn up a picture upon your screen right now what an unproportioned yacht spoiler looks like. That is what the rear end of that car looks like. Unfortunately, I do have to agree with everything he just said. Now, one thing you might have noticed on the rear end is under the rear wing, it has these like strange bits that hang out. Bits? Now, we don't know exactly what these flaps actually do. Um, they just look odd. Second spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> double yacht. A double yacht. Yes. Now, another thing in this car, we don't know what the interior looks like. And if it's anything like what Mansory did to the Ford GT interior, uh, We didn't yeah. want to be driving around a Rolls Royce <laughs> that looks like a yacht. Yes. <laughs> if I wanted a Rolls Royce that looked like a yacht, I would just buy a Rolls Royce and a yacht. Why not? Why not? Now... The one good thing I will say is when the new Corvette came out, it had this weird what I call Camaro style exhaust. What do I mean by Camaro style? Well, traditionally for the past 10-ish years, the Corvette has had a center exit exhaust, which has actually looked good. And with the new Corvette, they were off to the sides and it looked like a Camaro, the whole squared off rear end look. They put the exhaust back in the middle, which actually looks good. And, um, I'm, and I must concede, it looks much better with those four exhaust pipes. It does. Now, again, things I'm not sure about, some of the weird carbon fiber work and the Italian flag on the brake calipers, even though it's an American car. We don't know. Yes, we do not know. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed watching episode two of the Spoken Wheel Show. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek, and thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah, bye, 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 bye. bye.